we had a lot of trouble with the um, council, you know, because we've always taken in strays. They wanted us to put the cats into fucking, like, take them around to the pound, and they only last, the, day, the next day they're dead, you know. So I wasn't going to be, you know, we love our cats, you know. I mean, it, it, when we had about 12 at one stage, it was costing us, like, $10 a day to feed them, you know. Over a fortnight, that's a bit of money. You know? Like uh, uh, 140 our, bucks. The cats are like our family. Family, our, yeah. Our children. We don't have children. Like, we, Mike and I. Like our children. Yeah, we don't have children that we know of anyway. So, so this is the closest thing to a family that we have as our cats. So we love them. Neither of us have ever made a girl pregnant that we know of. You know. So. Uh, and the only thing we can think of is that it's because of the drugs. Either that or the tight pants we used to wear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tight pants Sorties. all the time. You know, and jocks. We don't wear jocks anymore. <laughs> Commando. Yeah. But anyway, we're all fucking, we're all basically cleaned up our act, you know. I don't take drugs anymore and the other guys in the bands don't take drugs. Or, you know, once in a while I might have something if it's offered to them, but, you know, don't even smoke grass really. Oh, I don't smoke grass. I don't take anything. Even if it's offered to me, only because speed and shit makes me feel sick. Yeah, you know, so I don't worry about it. I still like heroin, but it costs me too much money. So I'd rather buy guitars than buy heroin. So I'm mm. Giving it all away. I won't lie. I still dabble with when I've got Extra when I get money. paid. I, I have one nudge. As soon as I came back from Sydney, wasn't mm. it? I went uh, for that historic drive to Sydney where uh, we, we dropped a trip in the car, you know, before we left. And, uh, yeah, we drove to Sydney and sort of got, lost lo their way. got lost yeah. and ended up driving through Grong Grong. Well, anyway, uh, the Saturday night came and we was, you know, it, we were staying right in the heart of King's Cross and... Uh, um, we were told uh, by some friends, uh, oh, yeah, if you want to have a good time, go to the uh, what Mantle, was it? Room. Mantle Room. And uh, they said, oh, if you want to be uh, cool, just tell them you're in a band. So we said, Gro uh, I'm going to be in this gro new band, Grong Grong. We said, yeah, you come in, come in. Uh, and so it was a good luck name right from the word so, go. Yeah, I ended up... Uh, Despite us being Hungarian. Well, it took off like a skyrocket. Mm, mm. If word was that, that, that we were playing, then, uh, you know, that, that it was like having a party coming. Yeah, instant you know. crowd. Yeah. Up until Grong Grong, all the bands I'd seen had been more or less run-of-the-mill punk bands, and I saw Grong Grong, and uh, just blew me away. Our first gig in Sydney, we, we supported the... Uh, who did go? We were the first band on on the night. After the whole finished, roof lifted. After we finished, like, uh, well, it was like at least half the people left. Yeah. The way the Dead Kennedys did things, they wanted to not just play the place, but see any band, local bands that were really, you yeah, know. They were right into, you know. Yeah. So they said, as soon as they got to Sydney, they said, you know, who's the, you know, is there any bands? And, you know, and uh, heaps of people were going, Grong, Grong, you've got to see Grong, Grong. And public image was completely different, Johnny Rotten. Gone to his head badly, you know. Didn't let us have the whole PA. Didn't let us have the back uh, of the, the and, back of the stage. They, you know, made they, us, had they made us mop up the floor after the show. Yeah. Only half volume, but, so but so there was no chance you could blow off the, you know. No matter how good you were, there was, you know, if yeah, you're only half wanna, volume, they didn't want to get outdone. Yeah, they didn't want to like inadvertently a shitty on, Adelaide yeah, band because yeah. they were fuck, they were so bad. I mean, it's like he got together. Uh, just, uh, it wasn't like proper public image. It was like he got some session musos yeah, together. Yeah. You know, I mean, like middle-aged session musos that would play in any kind of band, you know, 60-40 bands, you know. 
That, that was so that he could well, get all the money wasn't, from the shows. It wasn't you know? that bad, but you know. They yeah. were, they were really well, bad. Well, well, it was two nights after that, wasn't it? After Public Image when you OD'd. 2024, 20, yeah, Christmas Eve. Yeah, t- you know, he, he'd been drinking. Yeah, I had Somebody been. had brought back some fucking lethal standard heroin from, you know, pink sent rocks, it the pink rocks, from, you know, from right, Asia. Right, you know, uncut. Michael being Bright, drunk, pink and brute, really had to have double anyone else's size because yeah. you know he's yeah. got a natural tolerance. Yeah. But yeah. being drunk, yeah. underestimated. Drunk and them. greedy. Yeah. And the people there didn't ring the ambulance because they were scared. In those days, the cops would come as well. Yeah. Yeah, Michael got discovered hours later, like grey and flopping at the mouth, yeah. and that's when they finally did ring the ambulance. Yeah. He managed to hang in there for hours. Yeah, for eight hours. Yeah. Honestly. Just they reckon he died a couple of times on the oh, way in the, the ambulance. In the ambulance, way, yeah. yeah. yeah what? Well, they came out of the coma and uh, they they thought I, he was I, never going to talk again. They yeah. put him. They I, put him in I, Julia I, Far, and that used to be called the home for incurables. Yeah. So yeah. you can imagine they, they I, put him in the home I for incurables. I was aware of everything that was going on around. But he him, wasn't but speaking. I, I couldn't talk yeah, because they thought he yeah. was going to be just like a you know not much more than a veggie. They wouldn't give him fucking proper. Yeah. You know, whereas, so he had atrophy in one of his people, legs. It was like as if I had a stroke sort of thing because my whole right side came a bit slower than my left side. Yeah. I think that I just, because there was no reason absolutely why I couldn't speak. And I think that because I was in the coma for so long, I think I just forgot how to speak because one night I just woke up at about two in the morning and I was pressing the buzzer and said, First thing I said was, "Can you ring my parents? Tell them I can talk." You know, and I'm trying like, "Oh, can you make this sound?" Yeah, it so wasn't like, like baby sound. A o b b. Wasn't yeah. like that at all. Yeah. One day he couldn't speak, and then the next day he could. After a few months, you know. So we like went like... in the next day, and I was saying to him, "Do you remember how you got here?" Uh was it no D? And I said, yeah, it was no D. <laughs> Without Michael, there was no Grong Grong, really. But the 90s and the two fa- the, the noughties, what the is ooze, that? The, yeah, ooze, the, the noughties, uh, were not very conducive. It's- when, when the band shut down, you know, in 84, they were really on the verge of something really big. I always thought that Grong Grong deserved to, somewhere down the track to come back together, if possible, you know. Um, and for a long time, it didn't seem possible. A couple of years ago, that the uh, um, Dick Dale put on this benefit show for the bushfires at the Brecknock Hotel. It was a, uh, um, a benefit show as well for the, um, was it a fire or something? Was it a fire or something? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that was our that was comeback, the Irish our comeback gig. Yeah. They're basically the same, except uh, naturally the people were younger back then, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, but we used to get full houses, and we're getting full houses now, right? And if anything, the people are even more wow now than what they were back then. So it doesn't really sound 100% like the Grong Grong that I, you know, grew up with, but it's close enough to be passable, I think, especially after a few drinks. It's still Grong Grong, but it's still not the original Grong Grong but they're playing the grong grong songs. You know, sort of like, um, Charlie's guitar has got this kind of scraping, murderous kind of sound. So yeah, that was still in the days when I didn't have arthritis. Like, I'm only half the guitarist I was. That broken mouth dude. He remembers us from the 80s, and he said that he said in a review that my fingers look like squashed fucking crabs scurrying up and down the neck. I think that we do a good show. And it's really confronting for people because of Michael's, you know, inability to stand. I really like the effect it has on the audiences where they get, you know, they get a bit taken aback by this sort of weird, you know, well, this this sort of crippled guy in a mask yelling at them and rolling his eyes. Before we die. Yeah, we want to do another album for sure. Before we die. Yeah. For yeah. sure. <laughs> Just to prove that it wasn't, it wasn't, the first album wasn't just a fluke, you know. Next album might be even better.